Over the last couple of weeks, high-flying growth stocks got absolutely destroyed. The Sea of Red is reacting to the Federal Reserve's decision to end tapering sooner so that they can have the optionality to raise interest rates to tame inflation. So the question is, is this the end for growth stocks? Hey, what is up everyone? It's David here. I really miss you. And in this video, I am going to try and answer the question whether this is the end for growth stocks for a while and what's on my shopping list for 2022. Also, just a quick update on the alternate path, which is a segment of my YouTube channel dedicated to explore other things like career progression. The guests I locked in are absolutely awesome. I look up to all of them personally. One of them is an ex-professional poker player that's currently working in Afterpay. And another is a Forbes 30 under 30 with our own business. So stay tuned for that. And the first episode is coming out very, very soon. As usual, no, this video is not financial advice or recommendation to do anything. But if you do learn something new, it will mean the world to me if you could gently smash the like button somewhere around there. And if you really love what I'm doing, consider supporting the channel via Patreon where there are some extra perks. So before I answer the question whether this is the end for growth stocks for a while, I want to update you on my CMC market portfolio and my stake portfolio. For my CMC market portfolio is worth 134,000 Australian dollars. And on this side, I have deposited more cash. So altogether, I am sitting at approximately close to 10% cash at this point. And I have opportunistically bought more or built my position in Roku, mostly just because it was getting to a point where Roku was getting a little too cheap in my opinion. So I added more on the way down. Of course, in saying that growth stocks did get punished. So for example, CrowdStrike got punished a little bit, but my position is so small, I barely felt the pain. So on this side, relatively stable, not too many changes. And on the stake portfolio side of things, it's currently worth 55,000 USD with an order for Regeneron. So I would say altogether, that's approximately 75,000 Australian dollars. And again, not too many changes on this. I think with the exception of opportunistically adding a little bit more into Twilio and Disney over the last couple of weeks. But besides that, very, very stable. I am considering whether I should clean out some of the higher flying growth stocks, like for example, Snowflake, but I think I'm just gonna leave it at this point. From the FOMC meeting recently, we have learned that the Federal Reserve have decided to end tapering sooner rather than later. And there also seems to be a indication that there will be two to three interest rate hikes in 2022. So what you really need to know is that the Federal Reserve is creating dollars out of thin air and then they're taking those dollars to purchase bonds in the market. And when the bondholders get that fresh dollar, it is probably going to be used to buy things or invested. That's why you see everyday goods and services are getting more expensive and stock and real estate go to the moon, mostly because there's more liquidity in the system. I'm not going to comment on whether policy decisions are good or bad. I just want to focus on working with the hand that I am dealt with. Since the stock market is forward looking, it already took into account the ending of tapering sooner rather than later. And that's why you saw growth stocks recently got destroyed because in high inflation times, a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. And the problem with growth stocks is that the cash flow that they generate is in the future, not today. And that's why when there is high inflation, a lot of investors will much prefer companies that can generate cash flow, substantial amount of cash flow right now. That's why you shouldn't be too surprised by some of these high flying companies getting a pretty substantial correction. Like for example, Zillow went from almost $197 down to 62. There's been obviously some difficulties in the i buying business for Zillow. At the same time for Peloton, they went from almost $162 down to around $42, which is almost a 70, 75% correction. And similarly for Twilio, which is a company that I own, went from almost $400 in Feb down to $273 over here. So that's almost a 40% correction. And Roku went from $469, which is crazy in my opinion, down to $236 and that's almost a 50% correction. Now, just to put things in perspective, this table compares the 2020 returns of these high flying growth stocks to their 2021 return. And to be perfectly honest, I think the correction really isn't all that bad. Like for example, NEO 
got a a thousand percent run in 2020 and they only got a 40 percent correction in 2021 and similarly for twilio it ran for 244 percent in 2020 and they got a 24 percent correction and you can say that for a few of the other high quality companies as well so the important thing to note is that just because some of these growth stocks got beaten up doesn't mean that all of them is a good investment or even worth your time so this is where doing your homework is really important. I've created a video on how to research stocks in the past. I'll leave a link in the description box below. At the same time, I also think that there needs to be a little bit more bleeding in the near term before I make substantial moves. Now, if you look at this S&P 500 chart, it recently got a 5% correction, but it rebounded. And now we're only around 2% off from another all-time high. It's a similar story for NASDAQ where they corrected around 7% and then it rebounded and it corrected again. And we're honestly not that far away from another all time high. If it wasn't for Apple and Microsoft carrying the index where they barely got a correction, I really don't believe the indexes would be that close to another all time high. Unfortunately, the biggest names are last to be hit. And that's why I believe that there probably needs to be a little bit more bleeding before I'm willing to be fully invested. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is that I don't think growth stocks are over. It really depends on your investment horizon and your objective. But for me, this is a really good time for me to have my shopping list ready and have enough cash to make sure that if the opportunities present itself and if any of the high quality names that I want goes down any further, I want to be ready to be able to capitalize on that opportunity. So for the rest of this video, I want to share with you four ideas that I have on my shopping list for 2022. A big idea for me in 2022 is Twilio. Twilio went from $400 to essentially $260, $240. That's a 40% correction. But what makes Twilio really interesting is that I think the market is underestimating how big of a deal is Apple removing IDFA and Google removing third-party cookies. I know that might sound like mumbo jumbo, so please do your own research. But what you really need to know is that you need third-party cookies or IDFA to really understand for every dollar that you spend on Facebook and Google, how much are you actually getting back? And where the world is moving towards is that if third-party tracking is no longer available, businesses are trying to understand what users are doing on their website, on their app. And in order to do that, you need something called CDP which stands for Customer Data Platform. And Twilio owns one of the leading CDPs called Segment. And Twilio owns approximately 10% market share in this segment. And I think that analysts, well, most analysts are sleeping on this at the moment. I, I just don't think they really understand how big of a deal. But Mizuho, which is a Japanese investment bank, have made a point that I thought, well, I think analysts are starting to wake up to this, where they said, uh, please ignore the price target. They said that Twilio has a promising inflection point in 2022 as the lack of third-party cookies in 2023 can result in greater urgency towards CDPs, as well as Twilio's ongoing leadership in multi-channel communications. And on top of that, the valuation for Twilio is currently, if we plot some of the highest flying growth stocks and Twilio has a 35% revenue growth rate, at that kind of growth rate, we should be expecting close to a 20 times revenue multiple, but we're only getting a 10 to 11 times. So I think there is margin of safety for Twilio. And for me, I understand the company really well. That's why I'm really excited about it. Now, another idea for 2022 that's really interesting to me is Roku. Now I know that I've talked about Roku in the past, but they've gotten a really big correction from $460 all the way down to approximately 200. And that's almost a 55% type correction. Now, I think that most people think of Roku being just a streaming stick company, but they're not getting enough credit for creating an operating system for TVs. As Google and also Apple remove third-party tracking, which means that the return on investment when companies buy ads are becoming blurry, they need to consider other ways of spending marketing dollars. And TV ads is one of those avenues. And this is where Roku comes into play. When it comes to the ownership of big screens in the world, Roku owns 31% of all of the operating systems that's running on TVs at the moment. Now, majority of that exposure is in North America with smaller exposure in Europe, South America, 
Oceania, Asia, there is none in Asia, to be perfectly honest, or at least very small. So the opportunity for growth is still very, very big for Roku. And I think I've talked about this, that the average revenue per user for Roku have skyrocketed from $27 to $40. I think that Q4 might be slightly higher, mostly because when you buy ads during Q4, you're going up against a lot more people because it's holiday seasons. So I do think ARPU would probably go up in Q4. We'll find out. But you can see that platform revenue is essentially ad dollars on Roku went from $319 million in Q3 2020 to $582 million, which is at 82% year on year growth. And currently Roku is trading at an eight times revenue multiple where in the past they generally trade at 12 times. So again, this is enough margin of safety for me to build a position and for me to feel comfortable to hold it over the long term. But I think instead of going through my thesis for the rest of the shopping list for 2022, I thought I might as well just show you. So I have Tulio and Roku on my list, which is quite high up in terms of priority. Shopify, Disney and Tesla are also on the list. And I think that Tesla is probably a little bit higher because Tesla is starting to generate a lot of cash flow, which is honestly what you want in a high inflation environment. But the valuation is a bit rich. So for me, this is quite high up on my list. Now, if I do a really good job with these, I also have the rest of these to consider. These are more good to have, not really a must have. I think the green is more of a must have in my opinion. So ultimately, I don't think this is the end for growth stocks. Even though that we're heading towards an environment that's not very good for growth stocks, I think I have a long enough investment horizon and also a high enough risk tolerance to really make the most of these opportunities. But you know your circumstances the best. So you gotta make a decision that's best for you. And for me, I have my shopping list ready and I have enough cash ready that when the opportunity comes, I'm ready to pounce. And there's one more thing I wanna leave you with and that's please focus on your ability to generate income because I don't look at my portfolio all the time. I don't really worry about the macro conditions even though that I'm aware of it, but focusing on my ability to generate income gives me the security and the confidence to keep investing. And I think that's really important for financial independence over the long term because I don't want to win the match to lose the tournament. If you survived all the way to the end, thank you. You are the real MVP. And if you did learn something new, it would mean the world to me if you could gently smash a like button somewhere around there, subscribe to my channel so that when I release future content, you'll be the first one to know. As always, Otto will always do the honors and I'm going to see you very, very soon.